Hi, I'm Paul Friedman, founder of the Marriage Foundation. And the topic that we have before us now is because somebody wrote in and you could write into it's a free service and said my wife came out as a lesbian. And that is quite a dilemma, isn't it? Because the first reaction is, oh my God, how come I didn't know? Or I guess I kind of knew. And all of that doesn't really matter. You see, the sexuality, the tendency towards sexuality is governed by the lowest part of us. It's, it's the primal part of us. All of us are driven by the drive to survive to a greater or lesser degree. We live on three planes of consciousness. The primal consciousness is that which is determined by the body. We have a body, all of us have a body. And the body is governed primarily by the drive for self-preservation, the drive to survive. And so it's constantly pinging the mind watch out, be careful, it's very defensive, very selfish, and its subordinate drive is for procreation. And what happens is that because we're so sophisticated, we take sex and turn it into our, our God. It becomes the ultimate experience that we can have in life. And so many people believe that it's the ultimate experience. Now they'll throw in substitutes like having children as an ultimate experience and like that. But it really has invaded our consciousness through movies and television and romance novels without us realizing that it's primal. It's based all in the body. Now the next level is the mundane level which is sort of in between the primal level and the level of who we actually are. We're souls. We are souls who have taken on human form. And then that human form, ha as a human form, we've chosen because we have free will. And although it acts in a very subtle way in this regard, we chose our gender before we were born. And, and I'm not saying somebody said, okay, raise your hand if you want to be a woman, raise your hand if you want to be a man. But anyway, the point that I'm making here is that when you got married, you were choosing a life that you thought would be happier every single day. You chose a life within which you could experience unconditional love. Those are the two reasons to get married. Everything else is a sub-reason. What happened? If you get in a car, you don't just sit there and wait for it to take you someplace. You drive it. Well, when you got married, you were supposed to drive it. And that means taking responsibility for creating happiness, for cultivating love, and so the real problem isn't the choice that your wife has now made. The real problem goes back to the choice that you didn't make. You didn't make the choice to contribute to love and happiness. You didn't make it a conscious decision that I'm going to make my wife so happy It'll blow her away. You lived on the mundane plane. Now, your wife is telling you, well, I've chosen women over men, which means that both of you have been living on that plane of mundane consciousness, of seeking physical gratification instead of soul gratification. So the question now is, what do you do? Well. It's a little bit of a roundabout deal. You need to still become that man whom she will choose to love with all of her heart, mind, and soul 
over anyone else. Because what she's really telling you is, I'm going to cheat on you. Isn't it so? And don't make a mistake here. This isn't like, oh, you know, I've decided to take up bowling. People, because we're human beings, use sex as a way of connecting. And because ultimately we're still human beings, so it may be subconscious. She's lacking the connection with you. You need to learn how to make that happen. You're not going to just say, oh, cool video, Paul. I'm going to like it. I'm going to subscribe to your channel. I get it. I'll make her love me. We're not educated. The mainstream doesn't understand it. You need to dig in. And at this point, don't look at the fact that your wife has told you she's a lesbian. Look at the fact that your wife has told you you're not taking care of my needs. She'll call them her emotional needs, but it's much deeper. You're not addressing your needs as a soul, neither yours nor hers. So get the course for men. That's the only way you're going to learn how to turn your marriage back into a marriage. Actually, I say back into a marriage. It really never was one. And it's not your fault. You didn't know how. So that's really it. I hope this is helpful for you. I hope it gives you a perspective that makes more sense than any of the other ideas you've heard. And I do appreciate your coming to visit and seeing what we're all about at the Marriage Foundation. God bless and take care.